Good morning, it's day 106. It's just after dawn here, and I am officially sleep deprived. I've been up every few hours taking care of the wife, putting in uh, eye drops and meds and all that. She's on a schedule, and she has to have everything done, and she's waking up in pain. You know, it's hopefully going to last just another day or two at the most, but you know, she's okay because she goes right back to sleep, gets knocked out, but I'm up. So I'm on like four or five hours of sleep again. I've been up since about four o'clock this morning. Sometimes I just can't go back to sleep. So I crashed hard last night again because I was just exhausted. And I was trying to do some coding. It was 10 o'clock at night and it's just kind of blanking out in my head. So I'm like, screw it. Again, hit the pillow. Don't remember falling asleep. Woke up again, you know, just a few hours later and well, that's it. So I'm going to go for a ride. Uh, did a little bit of coding work this morning, but uh, running into some stumbling blocks, so I put out a couple calls for help. We'll let those come back. And uh, then I got, I really have to finish up a shoot today. I was supposed to do it yesterday, but it's just too exhausted. And uh, yeah, I got to get that out. And other than that, I don't think I have anything really pressing today. Just a bunch of normal stuff. A um, couple have asked for a tour of the car, and I will do that. I'm just waiting on a few parts to come in. Um, the only thing it needed, as far as I want to put some money into it repair-wise, is front brakes. They weren't, like, have to be done this moment, but the rotors are pretty well warped, so when you do anything other than moderate braking, you get a pretty strong vibration. So whoever had this up north, this is from Ohio, did some really hard braking. And I, I knew something was kind of off when I test drove it, and I mean, it's not broken or anything like that. But in the wife's, which is obviously brand new, she's only got like 5,000 miles on it, it has a really pronounced engine braking when you're braking. It'll downshift and, and brake really strongly, and the brakes are very grabby. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. But in this, it was normal. So I'm like, oh, well, that's, you know, it's not really doing that. Well, that's because the rotors are warped <laughs> and the brakes weren't fully engaging properly. So I, I just couldn't feel it. But when I did some harder braking, I could feel it. And then I could feel the vibration. So anyway, the really cool thing is parts for this thing are silly cheap. I mean, dirt cheap. I got a full performance brake set. I got drilled and slotted rotors, which I don't need. I'm not, obviously not racing it, but they'll actually help in the rain. We get torrential down, downpours here. So sometimes we go through big standing water puddles. Uh, there's just a ton of water coming up off the road. So that'll actually help channel a little bit of that away rather than just having stock solid rotors. But anyway, I got a full kit. Rotors and ceramic pads, 150 bucks shipped. I mean, that's just insane. And obviously, they bolt right on. I'll show you guys how to do that. Brakes are easy. So, I mean, that doesn't even buy two rotors for the Mini. Not even. I mean, my brake jobs were, if I was lucky, going down to the independent shop here, 850 bucks for the Mini. It was just insanely. The rears were uh, usually about. Uh, 450 and the fronts they would do for about 400. The, the rears on the Mini had screw in ratcheting calipers, so it was kind of a pain in the ass for pistons, not calipers. It was a pain in the ass to change, so I always charge 50 bucks more to do the rears. But uh, anyway, yeah, dirt cheap parts for this thing. I'm finding that I do miss a few features from the Mini. Not enough to have any regret, but just normal day to day stuff that I was used to, like yesterday. We went back to the uh, exam, and I miss having a dedicated side visor for the sun. On the Mini, you had one on the side and one on the front, so you didn't have to flip it around like that. And going down certain roads here in the morning, you just get the strong sun right on the side of your face. I was used to just going flip. I'm like, huh? Ah, crap. That's not there. <laughs> but, yeah, no big deal, so i got to move the visor. Who cares? I kind of miss the HID headlights, sort of. A lot of people don't know that HID lights, while they're beautiful, nice and bright, crisp, great natural colors, when they're new, they do age. And 
these normal headlights in this are actually a little bit brighter than the Mini when I turned it in. So, I mean, they were they were aging. And the thing about HID lights is it's not just popping in another, you know, six seven dollar light bulb. It's more like a three four hundred dollar ballast per light, and you have to do them in pairs. So, you know, that was another cost eventually sneaking up. And I could tell that they were aging because when I got the Mini turned on those headlights for the first time, I'm like, oh my god, that is a huge difference. I mean, just literally day and night difference. And here at the end, uh, they were noticeably dimmer. I mean, when the wife got hers, I'm like, wow, you got really good headlights. No, she has normal headlights. So do I now. The uh, minis just were a little lacking at the end. So, kind of missed the natural color. I was going to put in a set of silver stars, but I had them in my hand. I'm like, why am I spending $40 just to change the color of my light bulbs? I'm, I'm good with the brightness. Beam pattern's good. Nah, I'm, I'm going to leave it. Save 40 bucks. Who cares? So, and I'm waiting for my phone mount to come in just because, uh, you know, I need navigation and, ah, get out of here, mosquito. But, uh, yeah, as soon as I get that in and, uh, well, I guess that's it. Oh, who cares? I'll do a tour now. Hold on. Okay, so the color, it's a metallic dark green. It's just got a little bit of a, a brown tint to it. really depends on the light that's hitting it, if you can see it. it it's almost like a gold tint, that kind of brown, but mostly it's just a dark green. It's nice, you know, nothing great, nothing bad. That's the one thing about these I don't like is their color selection, Kia in general. They have weird colors, especially for the sole. They'll have like a, you know, baby poop brown yellow and a neon green all this funky stuff you know appealing to the teenagers and 20 year olds that are buying their first car I guess but really hardly any normal colors they got white black red this dark green silver and then the funky colors and that's it no blues no you know normal looking shades no nothing so I didn't want to get a red one obviously I already have one of those so it was this one or a silver one, and uh, the silver one they had had some rear end damage that they tried to repair, but I could see it. So this one was a perfect shape, so I went with this one. Not a big deal. And just normal headlights, you know, nothing great, but nothing bad. They are plenty bright. No fog lights. This is a typical import where a lot of things are individual options, and uh, it doesn't have that. I really don't care because, like I said, the I knew from driving hers that the headlights were plenty bright enough. I've only cared about fog lights when you needed them. Like in the Mini, the HID lights were great, but you didn't have any spread for like the first 10 feet. It was a very hard cutoff, so I wanted to see this, and you needed the Mini's fog lights on to even see that. But these illuminate everything just fine. Um, it's got this ugly front license plate bracket, and you have to get a whole replacement plastic insert to get rid of that. Normally in a car, that just snaps off, but on this it's all built in, so I don't know. I, I need to see how expensive that piece is. It's just for vanity, so I'm not going to spend you know, a lot of money on it, but if it's cheap, I'd love to get rid of that. I'm just, I hate front license plates, and I'm never going to put anything on there. My wife has a whole bunch of crap she's put on hers and changes her mind every day, so I don't like anything. Anyway, uh, turn signals on the mirrors and they're heated. Pretty standard stuff for that these days. Normal lights in the back, LED center stop lights. Uh, you don't get the LED side ones unless you get the top of the line model, which I really didn't want because one, it had leather seats and in Florida those are not too great. Been there, done that, ruined them. And it also came with 18 inch wheels and that's also been there, done that, hate it. This, this has really nice normal 16s, very comfy. And again, I knew that because I drove hers around. Um, in the back here, this is standard. This doesn't have any of the dealer installed options, so you get this carpeted mat here, and this just pulls up with a pull tag, and you get storage and organization underneath, and this cover just lifts right out. So you can take that out of the car if you want to. 
and they do have other optional things you can put in here. The earlier soles came with a spare tire. This one comes with a compressor and repair kit, <clears throat> which is fine. That's what I used in the Mini, and I'm, I have no problem with not having a spare tire. I haven't needed one in many, many, many years. Um, so that's about it back here. You get a power outlet. This is a tie down for a cargo net, which I don't ever use, so I didn't get that. And you can also have a cover the cargo area. Again, never liked them. I had the mini one stored and I gave it to my salesman yesterday because I found it, but I hadn't even touched it in years. Flip down the seats is very easy. Uh, these Headrest posts can come out if you need the extra room. You just pull this up, flip it down. Pretty standard stuff there. And just a little light in the back. The optional subwoofer would go in this compartment, and it's absolutely useless. There's hardly any extra bass that comes out of it. You know, it's a typical bass sound system. I mean, bass model, not heavy bass. It's okay. I mean, it's got decent volume as long as you keep the EQ in a relatively normal range. It's good enough for me. I'm not into car audio much anymore. Used to have, you know, 10 grand into a system, but those days are long gone. Don't care. On hers, we got a couple options. She has a protective mat, which I guess is handy. It's not worth 200 bucks looking back, so I'm not going to get it for mine. But basically, it's a, you know, a real tough I don't know, material, can't think of the word, vinyl, not vinyl, nylon, real tough nylon, and it covers the flap, the flap is still here, and it just kind of wraps around it, velcros to it, but you can't take this flap out now, because it's also tied into the back of the seats, and while it's velcroed in the corners, it's underneath the child seat mount, so you have to unbolt those if you ever want to take this cover off. So, you know, I'm not really worried about damaging this heavy-duty carpet material. It's typical, you know, automotive carpet material. And it's not like I'm putting cargo in here that's going to really destroy it. So, I'm going to save that and not put this in mine. Uh, other than that, the only thing that's weird is she didn't get the compressor kit. She was supposed to, but it... I didn't even know it, it came with one until I got mine. This is my old one that I had in the Mini, so I put it in hers for now. And that's the cargo net, which was like 80 bucks and was never used, so I'm not buying one of those. And, uh, let's see, what else here? Rear seat has a ton of room. I am, I'm loving the rear seat. Sat in it during the test drive when we bought hers. And, I mean, it's just got... All kinds of headroom. I'm six foot two and it is extremely comfy. There's no want for any more room back here. So, I mean, this is how far I've got my driver's seat back for me, and there's still a foot of foot room and plenty of height for your feet, too. So, absolutely beautiful back seat, zero complaints, very comfy. In the front, very similar between our two. Um, I saved a little money and I'm not putting in the LED lighting. I, I think it's cool on paper and she loves it in hers. I'll show you what it does. It gives you illuminated center cup holder and LEDs down here in the foot wells. And you can change the colors with a little button here in the tray. I guess it only changes it only changes with the car on. But you can change that color through a you know rainbow of different options. But here's the thing. While it looks cool, when you're driving at night it is a huge distraction because you can't change the brightness. The different colors cycle through have different inherent brightnesses, but some of them are just obnoxious. I prefer the dark red just because it's the lowest but uh, I usually turn it off if I'm driving hers at night. She loves it. I just, I hate it. At night, I do not want to see lights in the cabin. So, that is not going on mine. 
The other thing she got on hers was the uh, illuminated door sills. So that was like 80 bucks just to say soul when you open the door. Uh, I'll skip that. <laughs> I just don't care about stuff that is non-functional. This is all aesthetics. This is girl crap. She loves it. Here's what the phone mount looks like that I'm waiting for. And it just snaps up on the dash here. Rock solid. It's awesome. I already have my cradle, so this just bolts on. I'm waiting for the arm here. And that's awesome because it gives you the power cord. So your phone charges, you got your nav here, and it communicates via Bluetooth to the radio and the uh, wireless system. Uh, the other thing that is different on ours is the steering wheel. They're both leather, but mine is like a normal textured leather with, you know, normal grip. Hers is like a patent leather. Can't open the door, but hers is real slick, and it's almost like it has a perpetual armor all on it, so your your hands can't grip it. And I hate it. This one is very normal, so I was happy to see that. I have no idea why they made the change. Hers is newer. Hers is a 2013. This is a 2012, but mechanically all the same. The 2012 was the first model year for this design change, and hers is just a carryover, so they just made some minor changes to it. Um, 15,000 miles on the clock, so nice there. Um, like I said, the radio system is nothing special. It is the base system, so it doesn't have the 300 watt infinity upgrade or the Evo Microsoft touchscreen system, which is fine. Um, it's got all the normal stuff, and like I said, it does communicate via Bluetooth to my phone, so there I've got all my stored music. Plus, you can stream from the phone through Pandora or Tuned In or the new iRadio or anything like that. You just eat up your data, obviously, on your uh, wireless carrier. But I'll just be putting on my MP3s, same as I did in the Mini. And uh, the seats are really comfy. They're, they're basic. They're uh, non-leather, which I prefer. I've had leather before and don't prefer it, especially in Florida. Very comfy. They've got solid bolsters and they fit me very well. They're wide. Very comfy headrests. Absolutely no complaints about them. Standard controls, front, back, height, tilt, nothing big deal there. I love that the steering wheel telescopes. Many did not have that. So this actually fits me pedal wheel to seat wise better than the Mini and just as much headroom. The Mini had a lot too. Didn't have any complaints there, but this has plenty. My, I can wear a hat, do whatever, and it's not gonna rub the top. No sunroof, I do not miss having a sunroof. Uh, it was just more of a pain in the ass here in Florida than anything. So, especially with the Mini, because the Mini did not have a sunshade. You could not close the roof and make it dark in the Mini. They, they've always been that way. They just have this perforated screen to kind of block out partial light but that was really annoying so I like having a solid roof again that's nice um, nothing really special going on all the standard stuff six-speed automatic which actually performs very well it's extremely crisp does not feel like a slush box I've never been a big fan of automatics that's why I had the mini as a manual and two three cars before that a manual so you know, it does have the manumatic option, which I never use. Don't care about that. Pretending I have a manual come out. Uh, standard controls on steering wheel, climate control, uh, I mean, climate control, cruise control, your button for hands free voice control, which it does control a lot of stuff through your phone through that, so that's cool. Manual dial and hang up buttons, audio controls, nothing magical there. Front and rear wipers, normal intermittent. I do miss having the rain sensor that the Mini had. That was a very cool thing, and I do miss having automatic headlights. Back to a standard on-off switch. Did get used to that, but not worth paying a ton of money for. I also miss having a auto-dimming rearview mirror and the home link. I might put one of those in. Those are about 250 bucks, and that was something that I did appreciate and is functional so I would not mind spending money on that. This is just your basic $20 flip mirror and it sucks. 
once you go auto dimming you probably will never go back and I do really really want that so I'm gonna look into prices for that looked around at Amazon a little bit uh, they're easy to put in but you just have to wire in some power and they give you a harness and you just run it under the headliner or tap into these lights here for their power source it's not that big of a deal but that is a huge huge convenience thing um, this is the only thing wrong with it is a tiny little nick out of the dash material I'm just gonna take a little sharpie and that will disappear it has this what's called active eco it's just a button and it it's on or off and basically what it does is uh, changes your shift points and changes your throttle response it is a drive by wire car the same as the mini so you have electric throttle and electric steering so you can have a lot of things the computer controls and that will kind of boost your MPG supposedly by a couple I do notice it performance wise it's not bad to drive either way um, but it seems to rev a little bit slower and smoother and shift a lot smoother with it on so I'm just gonna leave it on it doesn't bother me one bit and I'm getting just driving around town about 26 to 27 and on the highway I'm getting about 28 so it's not too far off from their estimates and that's on regular that is a huge huge plus I haven't had to put gas in it yet I've only gone through about a quarter tank so far but I am not gonna miss premium fuel it's about a 35 cent difference here in Florida so that will save me what 13 gallons say oh, I'm bad at math save me about four to five bucks a tank so that's cool uh, engine let's take a look at that it's not a whole lot to see I need two hands for this that's another thing I kind of missed the mini had the hydraulic uh, hood prop this is just a manual bar hold on okay not a whole lot to see in here this is the top level engine a two liter in line four making I think it was 163 horsepower 147 pounds of torque somewhere right around there anyway with the six-speed auto it is a great pairing I have no complaints about it whatsoever it's only about a second difference between the mini which I had a lot of horsepower in so yeah no complaints there everything looked fine Just your normal little economy engine stuff. Plenty of room. That's it. Not too exciting in here. You don't really give you much to uh, look at or do. Just your dipstick and oil, fill plug, coolant bottle, washer fluid, radiator fluid, brake fluid, battery. It's nice having the battery up here instead of in the back. That's cool. Fuse box, standard stuff, air filter. I should take a look at that just to see how dirty it is. And that's it. Alright, so uh, there's the old tour. Nothing too exciting, but she is what she is. I'm happy. Got a great deal. Rides real nice and it fits my needs. That's what's important. Oh, and a couple of you have asked about the bike rack, and yes, I can use it. It goes on exactly the same way to the rear hatch as the Mini. Hatchback is a hatchback. It's a nice thing about the unit I got. It's very universal, so even if I were to get a car, it would fit a car trunk. But yeah, this will go on exactly the same way. Top two under here, the side, and the back. And the only thing that's different is I don't have a license plate to put the pads on. So I'll have to be a little careful and this feels very stiff down here so I don't have any worries about this denting but I will carefully check that out see where the strongest part is definitely not on here maybe on here but anyway oh you know what I think it has the option yeah it has the option to go right down on here and I do have this protectant this is a sticker applique to protect the bumper so I can put it right on there perfect cool all right well that's enough of blabbing I'm gonna go for a ride and I'll be back 
I am beat. I can only do a little over two miles today. I'm just dead tired. Legs just aren't working. Oh, that's funny. I just, uh, since I got the car, I've been looking for my other garage door opener because I've never needed it until now because I had the home link in the mirror. And as I'm starting my ride, I'm thinking about that as I was closing the door with the garage door opener on my bike. <laughs> yeah, that's where it is. So I got to get another one of those today because I'm not giving it up on the bike. That's how I come in and out of the garage. Oh, all right. Well, it's shower time, more coffee time. Got to get to work time. I will see you guys tomorrow. Later.